Miter joints are a very elegant joint. They're very easy to cut, either at the table saw or at the compound miter saw. However, because they are basically an end grain to end grain type joint, they're not very strong. So woodworkers over the years have come up with a number of ways to uh, strengthen that joint. One of my favorites is to use a spline that goes into a groove along that miter cut joint. Now the splines are very easy to make. You can rip those out of quarter inch thick uh, materials, uh, various hardwoods and so forth. However, cutting this slot accurately so that your miters line up properly and so that the slot is a consistent width and depth, that's a little bit of a challenge. And we've come up with this jig to aid you in machining those slots. Now it works with uh, taking the jig, clamping it onto the workpiece, and then using a handheld router with a quarter inch diameter router bit in it. Now we like to use these small trim routers for all of our small routing operations. They're just more controllable. But there's no reason why you can't use this jig with a larger handheld router. So let's dive right in and start construction on our jig. Like most projects, we'll get started over at the table saw by ripping the material to the appropriate width. Then using the compound miter saw, we can cut them to length and if needed, miter the ends on the various components. Now component B needs to be bevel ripped. So we'll just set up the table saw by tilting over the saw blade at 45 degrees, set our rip fence to the appropriate width and take the cut. Now we're ready for some assembly. I've clamped a piece of scrap stock in my bench vise and that's just going to serve as a stop as we line up some of these pieces. I've also placed two layout marks three inches in from the ends of our tool rest board. Now I've got my gussets and what I want to do is put those on the inside of that three inch layout mark and fasten in place with some glue in a couple of brads. Now the stop helps us position it so we can't push it too far forward. A couple of brads will help hold that in place. Now for the top plate, again glue and a couple of brads. Now most of the time when I use splines to reinforce a miter joint, they're a quarter inch thick. So it makes sense to use a quarter inch diameter router bit. Now this one happens to be a carbide spiral bit, but it really doesn't matter. Now we want the tool, our router in this case, to feed along so that it's parallel to the edge or to the bevel that we cut on the end of our board. Now we also want the router bit to just touch this edge of our tool support. So what I'm going to do is just lay my router on here like so and then take a pencil and create a mark down here. And that will establish the top position of where we want our fence to be located. Now of course if you're using a bigger router it's probably going to be offset further down. So it's just a matter of calculating that offset before we attach the tool guide. Now for the router guide itself we want it to have a nice straight grain in it so that it stays relatively stable. And it'll get held in place with glue and brads. Very carefully, and this is probably the most critical step on this jig, very carefully line it up with that layout mark that you put on there. And the most critical aspect is to make sure that it runs parallel to this top edge. Well, my test cut is showing that I've got an error in my angle. I'm actually a little bit wider than I am at this end. Now, it's, it turns out it's a little bit more than a 32nd of an inch, which is quite a bit. So what I need to do is make an adjustment to the jig to account for that, because we do need that slot to run as perfectly parallel as we can along this surface. Now, in looking at the jig, what I ended up goofing up on even though I used a stop lock along this surface when I put the gussets in, this one's standing proud of this surface a little bit, and this one's back a little bit. And that creates a little bit of an angle, enough to create that 30 or 40 thousandths of mistake. So now we need to correct that, and really it's just a matter of doing a little bit of hand sanding to take that angle out of the tool guide. This is the area that I need to drop down, and I need it to blend nice and smoothly all the way to this point. So I've made a little layout mark, drew a line on there, and now it's just a matter of some very careful sanding and fitting. 
Well, it took about three attempts, and now we're going to see how well everything fits together. So far, so good, and it fits up real tight. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is the spline itself. Now, we can actually machine the slot, and that we showed you is relatively easy. But the spline, notice the green direction. It's running this way. This is actually a very, very short cutoff piece. Now, one more thing I'd like to point out, when you cut them off to length, or in essence, rip them to length, make sure that you don't make them too long, because that will prevent the miter joint from coming together if that spline is too long. So take your time and make sure you make your splines up just right. Now you may be thinking, well, gee, why can't I just rip a strip of wood uh, long grain like we would traditionally do with a piece of wood? Well, that would create the grain running in this direction, and that would create a very weak spline. By having the grain run in this direction, it's a very, very strong spline. And that's all there really is to the handy little jig. Now, of course, this jig can work on any width stock. If you've got wider stock, well, you'll just have to slide it down along the edge of the board. Narrower stock, of course, you can do in one cut. Now, I wouldn't even have had to gone through and sand my fence parallel to the surface had I really taken my time and lined up these two gussets on the front edge of this board. But that's just the way it goes sometimes in the shop. I'm Chris Dayhut for Woodworking at Home Magazine. We hope you enjoy this jig.